There is no minimalist rule book. Well, until now, the minimalists have created 16 Rules for Living with Less, a free ebook which you can download right now at theminimalists.com slash resources. Enjoy. The Minimalists. <laughs> April wants to know, can you discuss your thoughts on non-monogamy? Can you discuss your thoughts on non-monogamy? This makes me, the question, as I was reading this uh, before I read it out loud when I was reading it to myself, can you discuss your judgment on non-monogamy is how this question is presented to me. Huh. Oh. Because it's like, well, I mean, because it, it, it really, like our thoughts is like, what's our judgment on, on non-monogamy? Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't read it like that. I read it as, uh, how do you, I read it as, as a, a um, do you two as a couple, um, believe it's good bad or indifferent for a relationship but isn't that that's a judgment though right yeah, yeah if i was yeah if i was making a judgment about someone else's relationship for sure that would definitely be a judgment oh i see in, in terms of our relationship um yeah you want to talk about this yeah how far do you want to go down the hole so oh god <laughs> <laughs> well you already started so you might as well he round up to six inches six inches so <laughs> um in the first episode of how to love we talk about a concept called cleft relationships yeah i don't want I don't, I, I, we're I, not going to go down that re- that hole yeah we we <laughs> could but it's a long answer right i know and, and so i just wanted to put that out there that like yeah we go down there we, we, we go down this this sort of non-monogamous ish rabbit hole on that first episode of how to love right so if you're curious about a yeah. much more in-depth answer to this question. You can go there. You'll never guess what a cleft relationship is. Find out in episode right? one of How to Love. <laughs> yeah, well, so, so, <laughs> totally so, made up word. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's a made up concept that, that we, we sort of came up with. But I will say this to give you a, a, a summary in terms of uh, monogamous relationships. I think it ultimately comes down to culture, right? We've been acculturated mm. to believe a few things. One is that we must be monogamous mm-hmm. to another person if we want to be moral. If we, and I, don't, I think that's nonsense. I, I, I think there are plenty of moral people who are not in a monogamous relationship, who aren't in a relationship at all, mm-hmm. and there are immoral people who are in a monogamous relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so morality is, uh, should not dictate uh, whether or not our... Um, should not How dictate many partners we have yeah our 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 you know, partnership preferences right mm-hmm. and and so i think the question around this is like how do you define monogamy how do you define cheating and and and, and all of these things and mm-hmm. i think those things need to be defined by the individuals who who come to the table absolutely we have a good friend, Ryan, who uh, has been in several monog- or, uh, non-monogamous, you know, polyamorous relationships, mm-hmm. and he has found ways to thrive in, in, in those relationships, right? Mm-hmm. But it does complect things f- by definition, yeah. right? Yeah. So to complect is to add more than one thing, to intertwine more than one thing together. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have three strands, that's more than two. It is more complex Mm. you go beyond that and it becomes infinitely more complex yeah a piece of me wants to say if if you don't find happiness with yourself like it doesn't matter if you're in a monogamous or non-monogamous relationship which leads to if you're in a monogamous relationship Mm -hmm. you're going to think you're going to be happier in a non-monogamous relationship Mm. and then if you're in a non-monogamous relationship at a certain point you're going to be like maybe Maybe monogamy is what I want to do. Mm. So, yeah. It, that's often s- seeking out the the thing you don't have, right? Yeah. And then once you get... Th- it's the same. It's, it's consumerism for the soul, right? Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, that, that that could be a good podcast title. Sean. Consumerism. For the I, I don't think it is for this one, but we maybe maybe in the future. Mm. Um, so. It, because it's or consumerism for relationships, relationships in a way, right? Yeah, yeah, it's object A, partners. like that Peter talks about. Yes, yeah, yeah and and once it Peter becomes, Rose. once you have that object A, it's it's what uh, um, Anthony DeMello talks about with 
Um, when he works with priests, they're always talking about sex. When he works with prostitutes, they're always talking about God. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's, it's because we perceive the thing we don't have, the object A, is going to be the thing that doesn't just make us happy, mm-hmm. but completes us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that is the showing up empty or showing up half empty or whatever and expecting to just be to to have them pour their love and acceptance and everything else into me as though that is going to complete me Mm. but it's going to every relationship has an us box in the middle of it and we do give and take the problem is when we start treating it like it's not tennis you know the 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 tennis the analogy where a score of zero right you could take something from that, from that box, but the score has to remain at zero. As soon as you turn on the scoreboard, it's over for that us box. It's over, man. Game's over. Yeah, yeah. So th- that's how I, I look at non-monogamy. I think it's often appropriate for some people. I think it's not appropriate for other people. And I think there are varying degrees of monogamy and non-monogamy yeah. as well. And that's sort of what we talk about with the cleft thing. 